Hello friends, today we have the honor of interviewing Shelly and SMC. Yeah. SMC is one of the top PR firms in Vancouver that does restaurant PR. And if you talk about PR, you would not know of Shelly. Like, I do not do this intro any justice, please. <laughs> thank you once again for having me tell us really more about you Yeah. And SMC. Yeah, well thank you so much for, for having us here. And uh, SMC is a full service boutique uh, public relations and digital marketing agency. We specialize in uh, restaurant, culinary, and hospitality clients, mm -hmm. and that's what we do. I know you yeah. represent all the biggest restaurants in Vancouver, and not just Vancouver, it's pretty international too, right? Yeah, Places. so we have, we're concentrated mostly in Vancouver and then BC, and then mm -hmm. we do on occasion have the pleasure of working with clients outside of yeah, Vancouver and even Canada. I mean, obviously I come from a, a biased place in that I know that what we do drives real measurable results for our clients. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's two ways to look at it. One is earned coverage which, uh, versus paid coverage. So earned coverage means that we work with our contacts, our media right. colleagues. So whether they're uh, traditional media or online media, influencers, bloggers, mm -hmm. and we tell our client's story to them. And, you know, hopefully then they're compelled to want to learn more and to write about them and that's called editorial coverage. Okay. Paid marketing mm -hmm. is, you know, an advertisement or a sponsored post. It often doesn't come across as quite as genuine because of course yeah. the reader knows that somebody paid for it to be there. At the end of the day I wouldn't have my business if we didn't drive measurable results for our clients. Right. So that's the bottom line. Right, yeah. We also wouldn't have clients that have been with us since we started seven years ago that right. are still with us today. So we work together in partnership with them. We effectively come on board and we act as their in-house team. That's mm -hmm. kind of how close and intimate we get to know their business. Right. And we are their eyes and ears and you know, representative of their public voice. Exactly. And mm -hmm. it's, it's funny because I was talking to Justin from Juke. Mm -hmm. And then I'm um, like, so what do you do for PR? It's like, oh, I work with <laughs> Shelly like really, really close. Yeah. And I'm like, even through COVID. He's like, yes, even through COVID. I'm yeah. like, wow that's a loyal customer yeah. and that's like a fan of yours. Yeah, we, you, we yeah. love Justin and Brian at Juke and Beatbox. You know, we feel like we're a part of their team, we're a mm -hmm. part of their family and early COVID days when we were trying to figure out how we were moving forward and who we were moving forward with, yeah. you know, I, I gave Justin a call and I said, how does it look? And he said, you know what, Shelly, we consider you part of the family and mm -hmm. we couldn't imagine running our business without you. So we are absolutely going to be you know, doing this together. Was when you guys first built SMC, mm -hmm. what did you know what it would turn out into? And is it like, was it as easy as you seem like? <laughs> it's just like, oh, it seems like everyone signs up with you. But mm -hmm. like, was it like that? I mean, it's not easy. I'm okay. glad that it may look that way, yeah. but there's a lot of hard work and long hours and um, that goes in behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And when we first started out, it was myself and, and Jan, who's um, one of our amazing account managers now. It was just me and him, you know, and uh, we grew from there. And I think, you know, growth for us has been strategic. So mm -hmm. we have the opportunity, luckily, to work with a lot of different clients, but right. they have to be a brand fit for us. How so? Why? And why is that really important for mm -hmm. you? Because uh, as PR, when you bring on a client, we're essentially endorsing their brand. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've worked for 15, 20 years building relationships with media. They trust me. So they know that when I go to them and I present them with a story or a client that mm -hmm. I am endorsing their brand and I feel like they're gotcha, of value right. and worth talking about. Mm -hmm. So if I was to go to any of our media colleagues and ask them to write about something that wasn't worth writing about, well mm -hmm. then the, our integrity would dwindle pretty quickly gotcha. and so our growth has been strategic and and measured versus mm -hmm. way more quickly if I would have brought on any client that had approached us that is so cool and I it, for an outsider looking into PR mm -hmm. you never really think about it's really what makes you different and mm -hmm. valuable is your relationships absolutely that's right? everything that is everything mm -hmm. that is so cool so you talked about the struggles the long hours you must have encountered some PR crisis <laughs> tell me one of those crazy stories that I'll be like telling my friends for for days yeah well I've I've I don't know I've, <laughs> <laughs> too many yeah I, I'm, I'm thinking we've we've had several crises over the years mm. um, before I had SMC I worked for uh, a very high-profile restaurant group and 
it's interesting how I approach crises now. I mm. see them almost as a challenge versus something that I would take very personally. Mm. Um, so we went 10 years ago when, when protests were, were, were quite invasive to a lot of restaurants. There was protesters for oh. foie gras. And yeah. so that impacted business quite significantly with mm. protesters in front of the restaurant every day. Yeah. Um, I also worked on um, Fox's Hell's Kitchen series with Chef Gordon Ramsay. Whoa. And because of that, there was very high scrutiny on the restaurant that was the prize for that season. Uh, right. That was back in 2010. Yeah. And you know there was an expose article of sorts that took you know some health code violations completely out of context. And mm. that made national news just because of their profile wow. on television so there's those and then and now I guess you know our most immediate crises would be COVID right and in dealing with um, COVID cases or exposures within some of the restaurants mm -hmm. and I think that the the public sentiment on that has has changed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not quite so scary at this point right. and I don't think that there's blame placed on the restaurants so gotcha. the first one or two were a lot to deal with and mm. now we just take it in stride and can approach that with confidence beautiful like mm -hmm. okay you know what let's a uh, crash course 101 for yeah. our viewers let's say for example if they want to have good pr mm -hmm. what would your advice be for them what would be that one thing you're like you know what first of all these are the steps i would take like just one you know what? i don't want to give away all your secrets yeah i, I mean every single client is different Okay, and so, yeah. you know, part of that process is really getting to know that company's voice and that company's brand. And then mm -hmm. it's working with them on finding those things that perhaps they take for granted that make them unique and special. It's like that unique selling proposition that they take for granted, but then we're bringing that out and then trying to tell a story with it. Next up is a rapid question series. Okay. okay? So this is like, you just need to... Answer me with your um, like <laughs> the most authentic response. We don't need to think too much about it. I want to capture that um, that real authentic response. Okay, um, what do you think about the food scene in general in Vancouver? It's come a long way, baby. A long way. Yeah. All right, awesome. What do you think about owning a restaurant in Vancouver? Uh, harder than people may think. Harder. Why is that? In that. There's that romanticized version or vision that you have about what it's like to own a restaurant. You know, welcome friends, welcome guests, but there's so much that goes in be behind the scenes that mm -hmm. people don't even think about. What is one thing that scares you away from restaurants? Mm -hmm. Long hours, low margins. Gotcha. Yeah. What do you think, would you ever want to own a restaurant? Yes. You would? I wouldn't though. You wouldn't, but, but you I, would want to. But I have a dream of it. You have a dream of it, yeah. that, that romanticized yes. feeling. I romanticized. have a romanticized vision of what that would look like, but I know too much. Tell me that vision, tell me that dream of mm -hmm. yours in, let's say, three sentences or four sentences. Paint mm -hmm. that picture, show me. Neighborhood restaurant, 20 to 30 seats, regular customers that come in, know you like family, beautiful food, incredible suppliers and ingredients, good value. Beautiful. I have a location. You have a location? Well, I walk by it almost every day, but... You're going to manifest yeah. that to life one day. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it's, when, it's when you don't care about it anymore. Yeah. It's like, you know what? This is truly a passion project. Yeah. Um, for me, just to share a little bit about yeah. us, me and my wife, we went to uh, Spain okay. three, four years ago. And we really love the Spanish tapas. Mm -hmm. We love the fact that it's $4, $5, and it's a really bite-sized... Uh, drinks, mini glasses of, of wine and, mm -hmm. and beer, and you just sit down and chat. And yeah. you just, it's just such a great bonding mm -hmm. environment, and that's kind of something that we want to be able to bring to Vancouver, mm -hmm. and um, when we can do that. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll be in touch, you know. Beautiful, I like <laughs> that, I like that. Why yeah. do you think, um, what's the biggest struggle that you hear all the time with restauranteurs? Pre-COVID staffing. Pre-COVID, staffing is an issue, mm -hmm. yes. Finding good people, there was a staffing shortage in Vancouver. Mm. Now, unfortunately, that's not the case. Mm. So, um, yeah, obviously things have changed in the past, you know, post-COVID right, right, right. versus pre-COVID. And then post-COVID mm -hmm. is, what's the biggest challenge? Trying to stay alive. Just trying to stay alive, yeah, that's a good one. Actually, funny enough that there are some restaurants that are super popular, so. Yeah. yeah. 
what, why do you think, what, what, what made that split? Mm -hmm. Like what would, what is that thing that makes some restaurants like busier than ever mm -hmm. and those that are suffering? Mm -hmm. Pre-COVID or post-COVID, I always say authenticity. Authenticity. And that doesn't necessarily mean that your food is authentic. That means, do you approach something with hot heart? Do you approach it with authenticity? Is it something that you're passionate about? Mm. Why are you in this business? Is it just to make money? Then people can sense that. Wow. And so true. Yeah. Yeah. And people, you think that restaurants are able to survive or are performing much better when they're being authentic? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. I like that. It's the heart. The passion. The passion yeah. and yes. the heart. Love it. And that comes from the top down, but it's exemplified in every single aspect of the restaurant. From mm. the team, the morale, from what's on the plate, the ingredients, the suppliers, the decor. Mm. It has to make sense and be mm. presented in a full package. Oh, yeah, so I, I honestly... Um, speak with restaurateurs every single day obviously yes. but even new businesses that are contacting us to explore what PR could look like for them right and I can tell very quickly where they're coming from and what their motivations are mm. and for us it's very important to work with people that are in it because they have those right motivations mm. and for working with PR and oftentimes the restaurants are doing so many amazing things mm -hmm. that are so interesting and you know, they just don't know how to package it in a way mm. that will tell the story in the way that will yeah. get them exposure. Right. And that's what we're here for. We're, we're here right. to take what they're doing and just make a few tweaks, mm. package it up, and then present it to the world. I love that. And I guess it, it, it's contradicting to, and it's like, it doesn't do you any justice if you bring in someone that's not authentic mm -hmm. and that doesn't work from passion because the success is not gonna be there. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter how much you put in. You know, with, with COVID as well, there are some restaurants that luckily were set up to adapt very quickly. Mm. So if they already had the infrastructure in place for takeout and delivery, yeah. then they were already ahead of the game. Gotcha. If they were fortunate to be in a restaurant on a corner that had a yeah. side window yeah. like Livia or Revolver, mm. then they were already ahead of the game. Right. So, and then there's some restaurants that just right away, they, they saw the challenge and they rose to the occasion mm -hmm. and they, they just made it happen versus others that just decided to, see, to take a step back and yeah. I'm not saying that that one is right and one is wrong yeah. it's just it was interesting to see how everybody adapted in their own unique way totally mm -hmm. and I guess the people that kind of braced for it and made changes and adapted to it really was able to see the benefit of it like my mm -hmm. friend from uh, poke guy mm -hmm. yeah I'm like why are you open there's yeah. no one through the, no one's here and mm -hmm. he's like oh I want to be able to position myself mm -hmm. that I'm always open Mm -hmm. So when things are right again, mm -hmm. or when things are not right, mm -hmm. they can still, they still know they can count on us. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I'm like, wow. And then a month later, we went to find him. And he's like, yeah, see, these guys are open now, but mm -hmm. no one knows they're open. Yeah. Because they didn't open through, they didn't stick it out. Yeah. The same thing goes pre-COVID was when, you know, a restaurant that was very, very popular for lunch, let's say, and dinner, but they had a booming lunch business and they decided for whatever reason to close for lunch. And then a year later, they said, you know what? We want to open for lunch again. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think lunch came back right away? Mm -hmm. no. no. Because it takes a long time to build that public perception and to create habits. I love that, creating mm -hmm. habits. That's mm -hmm. really the key. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that is actually really interesting. What do you think about how delivery apps mm -hmm. and their effect in the, in the restaurant industry? Mm -hmm. There's like two sides to it. Mm -hmm. I have a lot to say on this topic. <laughs> please, please, yeah. Yeah. Your honest feedback. Just, boom, give me yeah, those punchlines. Absolutely. Do you like them? Do you actually you know what? Do you like them or do you not like them? I think that right now they are a necessary evil. Okay. Necessary evil. Yeah. Yes. And I think that, you know, there's there's three main delivery apps yeah. with another emerging in Vancouver right now. Mm -hmm. Um they range in support for the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you look at Uber, they charge 30% commission right yeah. off the top. So right there with a restaurant that's dealing with what, four to 6% profit margin, yeah. how do you think that translates? It yeah. doesn't, it doesn't, right? No. No. And then you have DoorDash that, you know, um, 
their fees are a little bit less and they were working with some restaurants. Skip the Dishes introduced a, uh, like a COVID relief program with 15% of commissions mm -hmm. that were, went back to the, to the restaurant. So, you know, they all treated it very differently. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I think that the delivery apps allowed a lot of restaurants right away to be mm -hmm. able to still continue their business. Right. But it's not, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's not really a, a, a viable solution for the long term. Can you so, say you hate them? Can't say I hate them. There's emerging apps like <laughs> from Two, Brandon from Pigeon is introducing oh. a at cost delivery service, which has been oh, great. Wow. So, yeah. you know, he started very early in COVID days to right. do that. Um, and some restaurants like Nuba, for example, they're mm. doing direct delivery. Gotcha. So they're they're employing their staff. Yeah. They're they're keeping the money in the mm -hmm. local economy. And of course, as we know, would you rather keep that money in the local economy? They say what sixty cents on every dollar stays in the community versus supporting something like the delivery apps coming from Silicon Valley, where right. there's only you know let's say twenty percent. So gotcha. yeah. how do you think we can come back from all this mm -hmm. restaurants specifically? Because like mm -hmm. a lot of restaurants aren't going to be able to come back. Yeah, I think that that is the harsh reality of things in that we are seeing some permanent closures, yeah. sadly. Um, some of them may have been on their way mm -hmm. to begin with. Right. Yeah. Um, who knows? Mm. I think that what's promising for me to see is that people are getting on with things, mm. however that means. So we're starting to see new restaurants open yeah. that perhaps put them put those openings on hold for a couple of months. Mm. Uh, we're starting to see people that are introducing promotions and right. really innovative ideas. Beautiful. And and I think the public only benefits from that yeah. innovation, which is, which is great to see. How can people help mm -hmm. throughout this period, do you think? Support local restaurants, for like sure. Yeah. Um, Support those restaurants that you would be disappointed to see if they weren't around tomorrow. Gotcha. If you can, order direct from the restaurant and pick up. Gotcha. So if you're ordering takeout, pick up whenever possible. I know that's not possible for everybody, yeah, yeah. Um, but think about, think about that. Gotcha. Yeah. I like what you're doing with Breaking Bread. Tell me a little bit about that. Thank you. Yeah. So Breaking Bread started very early in the game. Yeah. Uh, we... March 11th, so that was the night that everything was canceled, mm. effectively. So yeah. earlier, earlier in that week, we still had meetings where this was a thing that was happening. We weren't really taking it as seriously as perhaps we should at that time. And yeah. then March 11th is when everything changed. Um, we thought, well, oftentimes, if restaurants aren't doing well, then mm. of course we're not gonna do well. Mm. So we have to figure something out to support these restaurants that are starting to tell us that, that their revenues are mm -hmm. quickly dwindling. So we came up with this idea that it was really just a short-term restaurant promotion. Yeah. We reached out to our clients the next day on the 12th and within 24 hours launched this restaurant promotion with some of our clients and then we reached out to other close contacts of ours. We had mm -hmm. 23 inaugural restaurants right. announced 5 p.m. on March 13th and it just took on a life of its own from there. It's crazy, award-winning. Yes. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. I, it's very I exciting. That. that is so cool. I'm like, wow, yeah. an initiative like that that helps restaurants, that gives you that pat on the back. Like, yeah. You're doing good. Yeah. Like, that's, that's really I mean, exciting. there's a reason why we were able to do this, you know, overnight for us. You know, because if the restaurants are impacted, we're impacted. So right, right away, we lost 85% of our revenue. Yeah. Were you scared? Absolutely. Oh, what? yeah. How could you not be? Right. And so, but I was committed to keeping my team fully employed. Mm -hmm. We had this Breaking Bread initiative that, again, took on a life of its own. So, you know, we knew we had a campaign, we had a website, and we had restaurants from all over Canada mm -hmm. asking to get involved. Wow. So we worked around the clock for weeks, basically, trying to scale up the website in order to accommodate them. Yeah. And we're a full service agency. So we wow. had a writer, we had a social media manager, right. we had a website developer, mm -hmm. we had you know PR, mm -hmm. newsletter, mm -hmm. everything. We had the whole team needed to scale up something like that. Yeah. And because of the loss of clients mm -hmm. and the loss of business, we had time. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. And how can people support you guys? Mm -hmm. our viewers breaking bread yeah I think 
By supporting the restaurants, you're supporting Breaking Bread. I love that. In the link below, check out all the restaurants mm -hmm. that are involved with Breaking Bread. I think like just bringing awareness to it is, mm -hmm. is, is key, mm -hmm. right? And that's something that I'm committed in doing, like mm -hmm. in, in reciprocation of you just taking your time out for us, mm -hmm. you know, and it's something that we're very thankful for as well. And that's why initially when we shot the secret sauce, it was like a project and then it slowly evolved into something that has a bigger meaning to it mm -hmm. where, wow, there's a lot of people who are starving and just driving down gas town. Like I'm like, what, 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 what's going on? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And then the more digging that I did, the more that we realized that, oh wow, like it's, we're very, very lucky and grateful to be so like relatively sheltered yeah. from the worst. Right, and that's why we decided that like all the ad revenue that we have would be gone to donate and help out the cause of starvation, mm -hmm. right? Great. Locally and also internationally to, mm -hmm. to the North America. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good for you. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you for your time. I really yeah. appreciate it. I uh, this is this is the only thing I can ask for. So yeah. thank you. And Thanks your space, for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Boom.